Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. Uh, the purpose of this video is to uh, chat about how to do, to do problems 7, 8, and 9 on your Unit 3 uh, homework for you Physics 109 students. So let's talk about number 7 here. It says a bicycle rider is uh, approaching a hill. Going uh, In my example it says going 14 meters per second. I, I suspect that in yours those numbers might be different. Total mass 67 kilograms. So I'm going to start with just a quick picture here. I think I actually have a biker that I use. Some of these pictures. Bear with me. There he is. Okay, so I've got a biker. This biker is approaching a hill, so I've got kind of level. Oops. Ground might be kind of level here, but ultimately it's going to end up going up here. And the idea is this, that if the biker quits pedaling and relies only on their kinetic energy, how high will they go? So I'm going to draw another picture of the biker up here somewhere. This little computer I use for this is really cool. So this is going to be my picture one, and this is my picture two. It's important to note that in picture one, the biker's moving. They've got some speed. But in picture two, they don't. As the biker moves up the hill, because the potential energy is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, the kinetic energy will be getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So the motion diagram for the biker might look something like this. Again, you know, the dots would decrease in distance, indicating that they're slowing down. Didn't do a perfect job there, but good enough. <clears throat> now, you'll notice that there's a height difference between one and two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw like a horizontal line. And then I'm going to label that height difference h. And this horizontal line is what I would use for my datum. So you notice that I'm focusing on the picture. Draw a good picture at state 1. Draw a good picture at state 2. Then write out the work energy theorem. PE1 plus KE1 plus work equals PE2 plus KE2. With the datum shown that I've used, PE1 would be 0. Ke1, 1 half mv squared. The work term is again 0, and I'll talk about why here again in a minute. Pe2 is an mgh term. Ke2 would be 0 because when they get to their highest point, um, they're not moving at that point. Now, the reason that work term again is 0, all right, let's think about the different forces acting on the bike. The gravitational force is down, and that force is doing work, but that's what the potential energy takes into account. When we put an mgh term here, we're already taking the gravity, gravitational force into account. You don't need to take it into account twice. The other force that's acting on the bike is a force that in physics we call a normal force, where these tires are in contact with the ground. The ground is effectively pushing like this way on the biker. This force, and again I label it N because it's usually called a normal force. The reason it's called a normal is it makes a right angle to the ground. That force isn't doing any work. If you've watched my videos about work, only forces in the direction of motion do work. This force always is at a right angle to the velocity of the uh, person. Like in this picture, the normal force would be this way. You see how it makes a right angle to the velocity. And that's true everywhere along this path. And so... Um, this force isn't doing any work because it makes a right angle. This force is taken into account. There's no other real important forces in this problem. So anyway, that should be enough to work at. Uh, write out the work energy theorem. Again, that work term will be zero, and you can solve for h. The h will be in the PE2 term. All right, let's talk about number eight. Let's see. The ceiling of an arena is 75 meters above a floor. What's the minimum speed a ball must be thrown to reach the ceiling? So as usual, I'm going to start that with a quick picture, and you should too. So there's something about a ceiling. I'm going to go ahead and just put a horizontal line for my ceiling. And there obviously would have to be a floor. All right, so this would be like the ceiling. This is the floor. It says something about a ball thrown. So I'm straight up. So I'm going to put my picture of a ball right here. This is going to be my position one. And at this po uh, position, the ball is moving this way with some unknown speed. Now. Whether it's, you know, a meter off the ground, two meters off the ground, compared to the 75 meters, that's not really important. It's okay to have a little daylight here. Whatever this little tiny height is, it, you know, we wouldn't want it to be 15 or 20 meters. We're not starting way up here. 
but um, what you know if it's starting a meter or two off the ground that's not important compared to that 75 meters what we're trying to find is how fast this needs to go so that it'll, so that it it could conceivably hit the ceiling so the motion diagram for the ball if it's slowing down which it would be might look something like this and here's a picture maybe right before it hits and I'm gonna call that position two write out the work energy theorem now relating position one to position two PE1 plus KE1 plus work equals PE2 plus KE2 Again, potential energies, you always have to define your datum. The lowest point in the diagram is usually a good place to do that. So I might call this my datum. With this datum, your PE1 term would be zero. KE1 would be 1 half mv squared. Work term is again zero because the only force acting on this ball as it moves from one to true is the gravitational force. That's pretty well it. There's nothing in contact with it and the gravitational force will be taken into account in the PE2 term. So work term is going to be zero. PE2 is going to be a one-half mgh. H is going to be whatever that height is. The KE2 term would be zero because in this example we're trying to find the minimum speed that it is thrown at. So it's just barely going to hit the ceiling. And that should be enough. Uh, you know, Write that equation out. You'll be able to solve for the H. The, uh, I'm sorry, for the V. The, the speed V will be under the KE1 term. All right, let's talk about uh, number nine. Let's see, a thousand watt motor uh, hoist is used to lift a service station. How much, how much time would it require to lift a 2300 kilogram car? So again, I'm gonna do a new picture. What we've got is we've got some sort of lift, all right, so, and this is ran probably hydraulically, and it's ran by some sort of motor. And this is gonna be my motor right here in this picture. And what the heck, there's a car on it, so. Boom, there's the car sitting on it. So the idea here now is uh, that this motor is 1,000 watts. Now it's important to realize what that is. That's a power unit. So hopefully you've seen my video on power. So power is rate that energy is transferred, or rate that energy changes. So this is how it's calculated, change in energy over change in time. In this example, they tell you the power, 1,000 watts. That's this value. Now, in, your, in yours uh, example, that may be a different number. I don't know. Mine says 1,000 watts. Yours might be 1,200 or 800 or something. But Okay, the change in energy, where do we get that? So in this problem, it says something about lifting the car. So, oops. so when the car is lifted, I'm going to draw a quick picture of the car at its new position. Now how high? I'm going to get that from the problem. In my example, it says three meters. So this would be, again in my example, whoops, that, darn it, what's going on there? Oh, there we go. That would be three meters. In this case, the energy that's changing is the potential energy of the car. If we measure potential energy from here, we would say its uh, potential energy is zero. If we met, and therefore the potential energy at this location is equal to mgh. The mass is given, g is 9.8 meter per second squared. The height is given. This is gonna be some number, and it's gonna be a large number, and that's okay. So now, once we have that number, power's change in energy over change in time. If you read the book, um, the book will say power is work over time. And that's fine because the change in energy and the work are the same. Um, I'm just going to keep using this. Power's change in energy over change in time. The power is given, so you put that value there. The change in energy is whatever you get here calculating the new uh, potential energy, so that number is going to go there, and then solve the resulting equation for the time. Part B, it says if the original motor is replaced by a 3,000 water. So for part B, it, you start with the same equation, power is change in energy over change in time. It's just that they give you a different value for P. Now it, it says uh, complete the same task. So whatever you got for this potential energy, that will now go here and you can solve for your new time. So that should be enough, I think, to get number nine done.
think I'll go ahead and put number 10 on this video as well here. So in number 10, it says an elevator is able to raise 1,000 kilograms to a height of 35 meters in 18 seconds. So number 10, we've got an elevator. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my elevator. It's 1,000 kilograms, including load, in my example. It moves up a height of 35 meters, in my example. There's a good chance that when you do your homework, yours will be a different number. And there's a delta T, a time given, 18 seconds. So, uh, number 10, how much work did the elevator do? So, the work is equal to the change in potential energy of the elevator. If you don't realize that, write out the work energy theorem. 1, 2. PE1 plus KE1 plus work equals PE2 plus KE2. And the elevator, you know, you typically uh, elevators are constant speed examples, right? You know, when you get in an elevator, just for a second, the speed changes, but after that, it's pretty well constant. So basically, these kinetic energies are the same. So whatever they are, they're just going to subtract off. And then PE1, if I measure from here, if that's my datum, PE1 would be zero. So your work is equal to PE2, which is going to be mgh. The mass is given, g is uh, gravitational acceleration, 9.8 meter per second squared, and the height is 35 meters. So for part B, where it says, what's the power output? So power is change in energy over change in time, or you can use power as work over change in time. Either one is fine, because you can see right here, the work is equal to the potential energy, and this is the change in energy. So whatever you got for a number here, take that, divide it by the time, you'll have the power. So I think that's enough for this, vi uh, for this video. What was that? I think that was 6 through 10. I think I'm going to call that a day on that one. And uh, I'll just make another one to um, talk about the rest of the homework problems. Hope this helps. Uh, have a great day.